So today I wanted to come by to talk to you about the power of the before blessing. The before blessing. Trust me, I knew nothing or not as much as I know now about the before blessing. Listen to me. This absolutely changed my life. And before we get started, let me just go ahead and put my phone on vibrate so that I can give you my full attention. Have you ever been in the valley of success? And in the valley of success, life is going good. You have a good measure of success. You're able to take care of yourself, take care of your family. You're a little bit prepared for emergencies. You're a little bit prepared for any eventuality. And so you are enjoying the success of the moment. But earlier this year, I found myself in the valley of success. Life was going good. We were rebounding from all of the lockdowns and business closures that happened as a result of COVID-19 and this world pandemic. Life was just beginning to come back per se, right? I found myself in the Valley of Success really enjoying life. In the Valley of Success, though, it's easy to think that you don't want to be a bother to other people. You don't want to ask for things that you need. You get to a place of self-sufficiency when you are in the Valley of Success. And most of us, particularly Black women, when we hit the Valley of Success, we don't know how to ask for the things that we want, or we're not comfortable asking for the things that we actually need. Now, as an entrepreneur, uh, somebody that works for myself, one of the things that I knew was important for me to do was to have a contingency fund. Absolutely. So every time I got paid, a percentage of that payment went into the emergency and contingency fund because you never know. Life happens and we have to be prepared for whatever life brings our way. Well, can I tell you that I found myself in a situation where life happened and I was $25,000 short of what I needed to pull myself out of this rat hole, to pull myself out of this life-changing situation, um, to, 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 to really um, pull myself out of a situation that I had no control of. Money was required. But I wanna tell you that even though I did not have this $25,000 that we needed to make up a $50,000 a 50, payment, uh, I was confident that favor would find me. And I want you to know, favor absolutely found me. Many of you re would remember that earlier this year, I got a diagnosis that there were precancer cells in my reproductive system. This meant that I had to take radical action to remove my entire, or have a hysterectomy, uh, so that we could immediately take care of the threat to my future. Now, this particular procedure cost $50,000, and I want to bring you to the place of how I ended up getting this uh, hysterectomy at a hospital in the United States. A couple of weeks prior to, um, well, a couple of weeks after I got my diagnosis, I sat down and I prayed and I was like, Lord, we are $25,000 short. We have $25,000 on hand because we'd been building this contingency fund. We've been building our emergency funds. And so we'd already been preparing. But as you know, we had already navigated COVID. Um, the year 2020 was really difficult. And so we dipped into these emergency funds already to take care of our responsibilities because both my husband and I, our businesses were closed for a number of months during 2020. So we had already been dipping into this emergency fund. So I found my myself in this place where I was trying to determine how I would come up with this $25,000. And so the spirit prompted me to say, open a GoFundMe account. Let me tell you something. As a woman of pride, who really, really feels good about being able to take care of herself and her family, listen to me. I resisted that over and over and over again. Every time it came to me to say, open this GoFundMe, open this GoFundMe. I was like, no, I am, first of all, a private person. Second of all, I um, I don't like asking for help. Remember now, in the Valley of Success, 
when we are experiencing that level of success, we don't want to be a bother to other people. And we don't really know how to ask for support or what we need. So in any event, I created this GoFundMe page, but I did not make it public. And my best friend, uh, Paulette, and I discussed this. And as we discussed why I didn't make that GoFundMe page public when I initially created it, it really came down to the place of pride. So I swallowed my pride and I made that GoFundMe public. That there was the beginning of every one of my before blessings. The exact same day I made that GoFundMe public, I received a call from a colleague. And she said, hey, I noticed that you're having some medical situations and I, I had a similar procedure done before you make any concrete plans here. I would like to ask you to consider having a consultation at Baptist Health Hospital in the United States. Now, I want you to know this was nowhere in my mind. I was already talking with the local doctors here, which was a frustrating experience because with the local specialists, uh, they were not open to my questions. They were not open to giving me options for my treatment. The local specialists made the decision about, you know, what would happen with this surgery and I, you know, the entire experience, I remember walking out um, of the hospital one day crying and saying to my husband that this could not be what God had for me. And guess what? It wasn't. That exact night, I got a call from a colleague who said, listen, before you make any concrete plans, I want you to check out Baptist Health because I had a beautiful experience there. That was my before. No thought in my mind to go overseas to have this surgery, but the good Lord sent an angel my way to deliver the message to explore another option. Let me tell you about God. Then the very next moment, before I could reach out to Baptist Health, I received a call from the local Baptist Health office. Now you have to tell me that these things that aligned and orchestrated were not in the will of the most high. Because I received the call from the local Baptist health office here in the Bahamas and representing that office is a dynamic woman who was a very good friend of my mom. Unbeknownst to me, I did not know that this lady worked there. I did not know anything at all. I had lost touch with her because after my mom died, you know, I lost touch with quite a number of her friends. And the lady called me the next morning and she said, listen, let me get you straight. Bring your scans, bring your reports, bring everything, and let me get you straight at Baptist Health. Now, she arranged my consultation. My husband and I jumped on the flight in July to go over to Baptist Health to do this consultation, but also to have the surgery done the same time because I walked out in faith saying that they would offer me a payment plan. But can I tell you that they did not? offer international patients a payment plan. My, and I went, I posted my GoFundMe and I said, listen, we are here, we're $25,000 short. And listen to me, I was overcome by the amount of support that I received from people. And while my GoFundMe may say that I received $12,600, I want you to know that we received far in excess of that. We received contributions from people directly to my bank account because they didn't want the GoFundMe to take out fees. We received contributions to people in hand, cash donations to help defray the costs of this surgery. And so we needed 25,000 to make that 50,000 goal and people responded. People responded to the call for help. My pride almost kept me away from a community of people who wanted to support me. And so when we went over to Baptist Health and they were like, oh, you know, we don't do payment plans for international clients. I said, wow, this just deflated me. I felt, I felt so sad. I, I, I cried, I was devastated because the procedure that they were offering at Baptist Health was exactly what my heart desired, a laparoscopic surgery that would have minimal scarring, particularly because I have keloid skin for the healing, right? But let me further tell you about the before blessing. 
So after the hospital said, oh, no, we don't do, we won't be able to, you could make the payment, the down payment, but we won't have the surgery until it is complete. The payment is complete. I picked up the phone and I called the lady at the local ba Bahamas um, ba Baptist Health office here in the Bahamas. And I said, listen, we're going to fly back home. We don't have enough money. We'll come back again in August. We're going to go home. We're going to work hard. We're going to make this $25,000 uh, deposit. We're going to go home. We're going to work hard. And we're going to make the money and be back by, I think, August 17th. And this was July 23rd. As we were preparing to leave, the very next day, the surgeon himself calls me directly. And he said, before you leave, this is another before blessing. He said, before you leave, I wanted to reach out to you because word has gotten to me about the work that you do in the cancer community in your country. I've heard the wonderful things that you do with the women survivors in the Bahamas. And so you know what? While we do not do payment plans, I'm going to make an exception for you and allow you to put a $30,000 down payment so that we can do this salary. So before you go, let me know if you want to rearrange this surgery for August or if you want to get going with this surgery on the weekend. Listen to me, the blessing that came. So we immediately said, yes, we are going to have surgery on Friday because we're going to put this deposit down. And so that was my next before blessing. I want to tell you that as I thought about the surgery and the process of getting the necessary funds together, even though we had a contingency plan, even though we had an emergency plan, even though COVID-19 dwindled our funds to the point where we only had $25,000 left in reserve, God made a way. And it took me straight to Philippians 4 and 6, which is simply be anxious for nothing. But in all, for all things by prayer and supplication, make your requests known. And I made my requests known. And I said, God, only you can pull me through. Only you can help me get the necessary funds to have this procedure done. And he came through. I want to tell you that I went into surgery that, that, that Friday morning. And I was afraid because... I didn't want to be put to sleep. Like, you know, you never know if you're going to wake up. You don't know what's going to happen. But I came to peace because I understood that all things were going to work for my good. And if it was my time to go, that was in God's hand. That had nothing to do with me, but that was in God's hand. And so I rested in God and I had peace as I went into the surgery. Well, you know, the surgery was anticipated to be three hours. They told my husband, oh, we're going to call you in three hours. You'll be able to come back hang out in the recovery room because it's COVID time. You know, you can't have people hanging around the hospital. So when she gets out of uh, a surgery and she's done in the recovery room, and we're going to admit her, um, you can come at that particular point in time. So three hours later, I'm still in surgery and my husband gets a phone call. Hey, yes, uh, she's doing okay. She's stable. As a matter of fact, every hour on the hour from the moment surgery started, they provided my husband with an update to say, how I was doing in this surgery. But at the fourth hour juncture, they called my husband and they said, there has been a complication. The complication was more severe than they had originally thought. And as a result, it made my three hour surgery nine hours. As the surgeon spoke to me, he said, before we were set to close you, just as we were wrapping up your surgery, this is my next before blessing. There was a complication that resulted in the main artery in your right leg, in the groin area being cut. The main artery that supplies the blood flow to my body and impacts my circulation was cut on the surgery table. And the surgeon said, when we went to repair this, we found two clots in your leg that we had to clear out. And before we closed you up, we gave you two pints of blood, but we made sure that the circulation in your entire body is perfect. Ain't God good. I went in there for one thing and the surgeons by demand 
declared something completely different that I did not even know was in my body. Blood clots were in my legs. So after the surgery, after they cleared that up and fixed my body up and gave me treatment for something I didn't even know, I was admitted to the hospital where I stayed for four days. Mind you, I only was supposed to stay in overnight, but I stayed for four days. When I woke up, I asked the doctors where I was. And he said, you, were the, you are admitted to critical care, the level before the intensive care unit. Listen to me, just before the intensive care unit. One of my greatest fears about leaving my corporate job was not having medical insurance. Uh, the cost of medical insurance is ridiculous. And that's why our contingency plan was so important to us. And had it not been for COVID, we would have been in a position to handle my surgery, my emergency, uh, without coming to the public. But I believe that every step is orchestrated by a higher power. And I'm here today as a testimony that when we sit in the valley of success, we isolate from allowing community to support us. We feel that we are a bother to people and we develop a certain pride. And that pride also is attached to the fact that people can see how successful we are, that we're working hard, that we're making money. And so they may minimize our need as well. And these are all things that I thought about as I started to brainstorm how we would find this additional $25,000. Right now, I wanna thank every single person that supported the GoFundMe, that made a payment directly into my bank account, that purchased a South South ticket, that came by and dropped off money. I wanna thank every person that wasn't able to financially donate, but they prayed for me because it was the prayers of the righteous that held me in surgery. I wanna thank you for your prayers. I wanna thank you for every message that you sent of encouragement. I wanna thank you for standing with me in what was one of my hardest battles to date. I wanna thank you for letting me know that you believe that my life is worth something because you stood in the battle with me and you fought with me and I wanna thank you for that. But further than that, I want to ask you to, before you allow your doubt, to plant roots and bloom into a tree expands your expectations in life. I learned through this process that what we expect is what we receive. And so we have to expand our expectations in life. We also have to have faith in the process that life will deliver what we believe. Initially, I believed that it would be a burden to ask other people for support, particularly since so many people uh, were already in a bad place with COVID. Um, it was a world pandemic. So many people had lost their jobs. I, mean, I thought it would be a burden to ask other people to support me. And I had to change my limiting belief because there are some people that weren't impacted by the world pandemic. They didn't lose their jobs. They can take care of their families. They can support. And there are times when there are angels assigned to our lives who will answer the call once we put it out. I want to close with a, a reminder for you, and it's a reminder that I give myself, and it's Psalm 84, 11. No good thing will he withhold from those that walk uprightly. No good thing will he uphold. And so... I wanted to just come with you, come here to you today to share with you that there is a before blessing. There is a before blessing. We always look for an after blessing, but there is a before blessing and I experienced quite a number of them. Before you make your plans concrete, get another consultation. Before I could call that hospital, they called me. Before I could leave Miami, the doctor that called me directly and said, listen, before you leave, before I could come out of the operating room, another challenge that I was unaware of was fixed as a result of a complication. Before they closed me up, they made sure that the circulation in my body and all of my nerves were working. 
Before I got to ICU, I was put in critical care. There is the before blessing. We have to believe. So I want to ask you today, what do you believe? Are you in the valley of success? Where you believe that you're a bother to people or your pride is holding you back? And if you are, I want to challenge you to step outside of that and ask so that you can receive. Take care. God bless you. Have a great evening.